We are ready. We are rocking. We are going to go live in five, four, three, two, uno. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this little sucker. This is the Logitech Brio webcam. You are not seeing me through it right now, but you will be in just a few moments. I'm using my C922 to get started here so we can compare and contrast because that's what we're going to do in this one. I'm going to show you around the new Logitech Brio, what it's all about, let you know the features that other webcams don't quite have and why I actually picked this one up. And we're going to put it to the test right here in this live stream. And I'm also going to throw in and spattering some tips around webcams and how to set up your webcam for the best possible video quality. So all of that and more coming up here on the stream today. But if it's your first time here, who am I and what is this? <laughs> My name is Pete. This is Studio Live today. My goal here is to help you create, record and release your best music. So aren't you out of your lane here, Pete, with video? Well, video and audio kind of go hand in hand these days. And if you are producing audio, you pretty much need to produce video. Plus, because I have a channel here where I make and create content about creating audio, I use a lot of video as well. And I often have to skirt around of what camera do I use to get the best quality, but also the most convenience, especially when it comes to live streaming here on your PC or your Mac what webcam you use and how you get set up can make a huge difference. So that's what we're going to go through here today. Thanks to the folks who are here live. If you do have questions as we go along, please just throw those in the chat, put question in front, and I'll make sure we circle back to those. If you're watching on the replay, no problem, drop a comment down below with your questions and I will definitely be down there responding. There's also links to where you can check out the Logitech Brio in all its glory down in the description. Those are affiliate links, so as usual, if you make a purchase, they will break off a small chunk and send it my way. But what is the Brio all about and why should you care? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Logitech Brio is a webcam. It is a 4K, so it can do up to 4K video. It has a glass lens and it is just pretty much from a consumer level, the highest quality webcam you can pick up. So for a longest time, I've been using the Logitech C922, which is a great camera. You can see it right here is what is the video you're looking at right now. And that's done a great job. But the reason that I wanted to upgrade to the Brio was that I want to future proof myself. I want to be able to have something that's going to work for me into the future. That's going to give me slightly higher quality video and uh, a few additional options, which we'll talk about and I'll show you in real time as we go through here. But why don't we uh, share my screen here and because I've already got it plugged in and set up here, I didn't want to go through the whole unboxing thing with you because that can sometimes fail here when we're doing it live. But here it is. Uh, cut to the chase, Pete. It's $200 US and it's kind of out of stock in a lot of places. So if you do find one and you're looking for one, pick it up. So it's about twice the cost of a regular webcam, twice to three times the cost. But for that, you get a whole lot of bang for your buck there. It is a nice, heavy, weighty item as opposed to the sort of lighter, cheaper, plastic webcams which means it's nice and stable and again it's got that glass lens it's also got a bunch of different features here that we'll go into in a moment and I'll actually say but 4k is obviously the big one so 1080p is what I use to stream here but having 4k for when I'm recording video is a good additional feature uh, it's got good low light performance so if you don't have studio lights here and your lighting looks more like this then you might want a, a webcam that's going to help you more like in a low lighting situation. So we'll test that out in this one as well. You got some security features there. So this is more of your prosumer grade, your business grade. But here's the additional features we have. So the adjustable field of view, we'll play around with that in a moment. That's going to be fun. You can get a nice wide angle or a real close in shot. 4K recording, nice smooth streaming, certified for business. So yeah, certified with Skype and all the other things. Mounting and privacy options. And I'll show you what this extra piece of plastic is and why I got confused by it, but that's your privacy panel. Yeah, cool, right? And then uh, five times HD zoom, which is digital zoom. Let's not get too excited. It's still a webcam and camera settings. And we will show you all of those camera settings in a moment because that's the key. When you're using a webcam, Making sure that you're getting your settings right is the difference between having grainy, crappy footage in your webcam and having what I reckon is pretty close to what you'd get with an actual camera or video camera or, dare I say, even up to SLR standard. Maybe not. Not quite, but it's close. So, 
Circling back to, to why this for me, well, because of what I do here, I do a lot of stuff right here, and I, I hit a juncture where I went, I either need to lift my webcams game as high as I possibly can, or switch over to using something like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera with a USB capture device and all the rest. I don't know about you, but I like simplicity and convenience. So I wanted something that was gonna have the lowest barrier to me actually setting it up and using it. And that's why I thought, let's try a better webcam first because the difference in cost between a this webcam at, at 200 US and say $1,000 at least for a mirrorless or a DSLR streaming setup, it, it's a big difference. So we're gonna go with the webcam for now and see how it goes. Righty okay. Now, the, let me just go back to my notes and make sure we've covered everything there. We have. So that's all the features that it has and what it does differently, but you want to see it in the flesh and put it to the test. So let's do that now. Now, as we said, right here, uh, we're going through the Logitech C922. And uh, if we come over, I'll bring up my settings. So when you're using webcams, and the reason I love Logitech is that their app, the, I can't remember what it's called, the G-Hub, ain't nothing but a G-Hub, is one of the coolest apps in terms of making sure you can tweak your settings. So in the C922 here at the moment, I can tweak this on the fly while I'm right here streaming. I can tweak this to make sure that all of these are set right. So my brightness, you can see here I've got all of these set brightness, contrast, sharpness, white balance, and saturation. I've got my anti-flicker at the 50 hertz because I'm here in Australia. If you're in the US, make sure that's set to 60. And then I've got these camera settings here. So I can zoom using the digital zoom on the camera if I do that now. Boom, <laughs> you get a close up of my face. And then uh, we've got focus. Uh, we have it on autofocus, or you can manually focus in there. And the exposure, which is super important as well. And I use frame rate priority here to make sure that it's the smoothest streaming experience as opposed to the exposure. You can play around with that and tweak that uh, if you want to. Uh, Marcus said, sounds kind of echoey here. Is that just me? Uh, don't tell me. Have I actually got the uh, audio coming through the camera? Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is the beauty of live. So let me just adjust this real quick. There is my actual audio. Wow. Uh, good thing I didn't get to the point where I said, hey, this is what you got to do to make sure that you have good audio. Right, so uh, we're going to leave it because it's live. It's live and it's live streaming. But uh, yeah, that's disappointing because the audio you are hearing right up to now is uh, yeah is coming through the C922 webcam. So I was going to get to this later and we were going to do some testing, but that is the reason why you don't generally want to use your webcam's audio. And we will test out the Logitech Brio's audio as well. But wow, that's super embarrassing. But yes, you can instantly tell the difference between the two. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tom Rochelle had nailed it before. I wonder if the audio isn't coming through the cameras instead of the mic. It sure was. It sure was indeed. There you go. So where were we at? We were, we were looking at this and our settings. Oh dear. Uh, again, it's the power of live. It's beautiful. So if we look at our settings here, we can uh, adjust. So for brightness, oh, you can pump the brightness up like that. Uh, I normally tweak it and have it sitting around like that. So we've got all the options here and you can see that I also have the Brio set up here and ready to go. So what we're going to do now is actually uh, we, is switch this over. So we're going to switch it to the Brio. So if we come back to my face here. Now, I haven't done this live before, so this could be an interesting one as well. Let's uh, hit the, the camera button here and I'm going to switch the camera to the Logitech Brio. Drum roll, please. Let's see what happens. And here I am back again through the Logitech Brio. And uh, I've done a little bit of tweaking to get the settings right. You can see instantly that it's a different kind of look here that we've got. And if we go back, uh, I'll bring over to this one. We go back to our settings here and dive in and start playing with this. We can start uh, getting a little bit of a different feel. So yeah, probably the brightness yeah, is around about that same one. You can play with the contrast, the sharpness, the white balance and saturation. And you'll see over here, like if I say put the white balance to auto, it does that. Now, I think the auto white balance on these cameras makes the whites a bit yellow. I don't think it works that well. So I tend to have a bit more of a cooler color there. And the overall kind of smoothness of our image here, it's, yeah, it, it, it looks a little bit more, like it's definitely popping, like the background, it's popping out the colors and things of the background there. So uh, it's, uh, oh, I'm kind of delay. Now, I'm, so now I have delay. Oh, so now, <laughs> has it changed the audio again? No, no, it's got the same audio there. 
Oh, am I am I coming through with weird? Uh, oh, oh, it might be the uh, it might be the the mouth not matching. So I've probably messed up. I'm using Streamyard here at the moment. I think someone asked that before. It's not really designed to uh, to to change cameras on the fly. So let me know if it comes back into some sort. Yeah, there we go. We're all good now. Yeah, so when you first switch cameras, uh, it does take the audio, because we're using the audio through the mic now, finally, and the video through the webcam, it does take probably about 30 seconds for them to sync up. So yeah, probably did look like some bad anime dubbing there for a moment. I think I need some coffee from my Studio Live Today coffee mug to get through this one. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, it's great fun. Great fun doing live streaming. Yeah, you normally don't have to go through these sort of things. Since we've already messed it up with the audio anyway, why don't we throw uh, the, the audio up here and take a listen to what the audio is like on the Brio. Uh, because again, this is why I recommend an audio interface or a mixer if you're going to get into live streaming. Because if I was to just use the audio here from the microphone, let's switch that up now this is the sort of audio that you're going to get. So it's it's not terrible, but the difference between what's coming through my Zoom live track and the, the microphone here uh, versus what's coming through up there, obviously there's more distance here. The microphones in there are not gonna be as high quality as something like this. So it's passable. If I was making a Skype call or if I was doing Zoom meetings, I 100% use this and I use my speakers and I use that because it's just way more convenient than having to you know set up individual microphones for everyone. So yeah, especially if there's multiple people you can use something like that but yeah you, you want me to go back to uh you want me to go back to the real audio though right we'll come back over here boom and there we go all fixed right so uh yeah that should be sounding much more silky smooth we'll come back over here and we'll tweak the other thing, a tip here, the reason I was out of sync before is sometimes, again, it takes a little while to catch up and sometimes to re-engage the camera, you just need to change something. So what I'll normally do is just drop the brightness down by a couple of percent and then put it back up again a couple of percent. And that normally brings things back into sync and we should be back to around about what we had before. So let's, uh, let's play with these because you can see there's a little bit of softness to this image. So compared to the C922, it's probably got a little bit more. Uh, it's definitely a different kind, of, uh, different kind of image. So let's just see if that's the camera or if this is uh, something else that we can play with. So if we come in here, the, the contrast setting here, we can adjust that. So at full contrast, I look like this. I kind of look like I'm posterized. And obviously, if the contrast goes all the way down, it kind of washes out the background. So finding the balance there is going to be something we'll play with in a moment once I go back to full screen. Your sharpness of your image. So at a completely non-sharp image, I go kind of all blurry. If we pump the sharpness up. I go like this, I'll just show you this. Uh, you get that real like uh, weird like soap opera kind of feel that doesn't really look the best. So we don't want that much sharpness, but I think we need a little bit more sharpness with this camera because it's higher quality than what we had on the other one. I think that's probably why it was looking a little bit soft when we had the sharpness down there. So we'll adjust that in a moment. The white balance, as I showed you there, you can go everywhere from down here where it's like I'm in, uh, in the Arctic. We can go around about here where it just looks like I'm kind of in the UK and then I jump in here to like Australia and then we go to like the, <laughs> to the equator where we burn up and Pete becomes uh, very badly done. So yeah, I'll, I'll leave that around about there. And then saturation is our final one here. Full saturation, hello. <laughs> and then no saturation is basically black and white because the colors have zero saturation. So again, I need to balance that one out to make it look like I'm not uh, orange, like anyone that we may know who likes to look orange. I don't want to do that. So I want to look somewhere around there. I don't want to look uh, too pale, like I'm missing some sun, but I don't want to also look, uh, yeah, like that. So we'll, uh, we'll play with the saturation in a moment. Anti-flicker, as I said, if you're in the US or Canada, is it Canada have 120 hertz power? Most places in the world have 240 volt power and that's uh, 500 hertz. Uh, Canada and the US have 60 hertz. And this just means, so if we flick this over, can you see how it, there's a bit of flickering going on in the background there? That's the, the lighting is creating a bit of that. If you get that flickering haziness, that's caused by your anti-flicker. So if you put that back to 50, boom, it goes away because the lights here, the powers, uh, 50 hertz cycling. We could go into details about that, but we don't need to. So we'll come back over to here. Now, all of this stuff, if you're using any Logitech webcam, here's the good thing. You can use this same software. So the Logitech G-Hub, uh, which makes me laugh every time, the Logitech G-Hub, uh, yeah, it means that you can adjust your camera. And I do recommend doing that. The default settings on your camera will look crap. 
In fact, why don't we, uh, I'm going to have to redo all these, but let's restore the video defaults. So we'll restore the camera defaults there. So that puts that back to its normal. And look what happens when I restore the video defaults here. So this is the default video that Logitech think that I should have on here. Now, would you really like to watch me looking like this for the next like 30 minutes? I'd hope not. So that's the importance of getting these settings right. So that's what we'll go through in a moment. Now, the reason that this is so bright is that I have got softbox studio lights here. So I've got a light there and a light there. So this the, the default is more for people that don't have that. So why don't we turn off the lights and there you can see. So this is more realistic. This is more like what you would want to see. But you can see you've got graininess there. It's a lot more shadowy. And we can start tweaking this to make it better. But without decent lighting, and obviously I've only got like one tiny light up there. So this is about as low light as you'd ever use something in. But it does okay, but it's it's not ideal again without the lighting. Lighting when it comes to video and camera stuff is super duper important. If we go back over here, so say we wanted to tweak this in this sort of lighting, again, we would be able to play around with some of these. We'd go play with the contrast. We probably want more contrast to kind of adjust for that lighting. So we'll up the contrast there. Again, give it a little bit more sharpness on the edges there. Drop the brightness a little bit, so we don't want that super bright. And then over here on camera, the exposure is an important one. So exposure is how much light comes in. So we can take the auto exposure off, and then we can decide how much of that light comes in. And what you want to do usually is if your exposure is up high, then you'll need to adjust your brightness down like that. So you can get a, a balanced image that way. So if we come back to my full screen, that's getting there right. It's starting to sort of look a little bit more like what you would want, but you're starting to sacrifice on your frame rate because uh, it's, it's going to not have enough exposure coming in there. So if we came back to here and we up on the camera, we make sure that the exposure level is higher and then we bring the brightness back up. Oh, now we want to go to the exposure a bit lower. Put the exposure down and then your brightness back up then you get a you get better frame rate but the image quality is going to suffer so it's a, it's constantly a battle and a struggle to kind of get uh get the right balance there between the two things but uh let's show you some of the other features of this oh, i've got i realize i shouldn't have done that default i should have uh, i should have saved this one in as a no, nah, it's, it's, it's reverted now. I didn't save it as the right one. So let's quickly just get this video. We'll turn the light back on. Watch out, it's going to be bright. We'll turn the light back on. And then I'll just show you how we can tweak these settings to get them back to where we want them. So obviously the brightness needs to come way down. Our contrast needs to drop down. Sharpness can sit around there. White balance will take off auto and make sure that we set there. Saturation probably just under 50%. Anti-flicker goes back to 50 hertz and our camera exposure is there. Cool. So yeah, you can see we can quickly just get a pretty nice image. I'm actually reasonably impressed with this. What other, uh, what other options do we have in here? Well, let's jump back over because the reason that this camera is super cool is that it has three different, uh, three different sizes, three different, uh, fo not focal lengths, can't remember the word, um, field of view. There you go. Thank you, Logitech. They've told us here, three different field of views. Let me just go back to my microphone. I'm just paranoid that I'm going to slip. It's going to just re-default back, uh, back to the wrong mic because oh, you can really hear the difference, can't you, between the two. So at the moment, we're at the 78 degree field of view. You'll see here that we have a 90 degree. So there you go. You can step away and then you get a much wider field of view. And we have a 65. So boom, you can get up close and personal. So that's 65, 78 and 90 degree. Let's uh, jump back to the full screen so you can see the full effect of these. So at 90 degrees, yeah, <laughs> you're seeing a bit too much, aren't you? You're seeing the messiness that's down here and then you're seeing too much over there. But this I'm imagining would be kind of cool that if I was like playing guitar, I could bring everything down and you're going to get like a much wider expansive shot than what you're getting. And we can then jump it to the 78, which is probably what I'll use for something like this. I think that's about right for, for that sort of field of view. So you've got enough of the background, but you're not too close up uh, to be scared by my face. And then this one, I don't think I'll use very much at all because I don't really want to, don't really want to be that up close and personal. Uh, and Gary Hub says focal length and field of view same diff. Yeah, uh, sure. I, I don't think uh, I don't think it's uh, it's that important. <laughs> Alrighty, let's uh, let's go through some of the other gear that we've got here. Um, we'll just come back to my video mode and make sure that I've just touched something on there 
to make sure I'm as in sync as possible. Not the not the band, but the, the thing. So what did we get in the box? Like I said, I didn't unbox it live here because I'm always so uncoordinated. And I'm really glad I didn't because it needed a reset. So I needed to restart my computer after the unboxing. So uh, I'm glad I didn't actually do that. But um, yeah, inside the box, we got the camera, which is sitting up there. I will disconnect it. Well, maybe I will disconnect it and show you uh, just so that I can show you what it comes with because it is USB-C. That's the other thing. I buried the lead on that one, but it's USB-C, which again is going to future-proof things. You can. It comes with a USB-C to A cable, which is what I'm using to plug it into my PC right now. Uh, but if you have a, a laptop or a newer computer with USB-C, it will use that. And for 4K, I'm assuming, and I will start testing this out with 4K video, I'm assuming we'll need uh, the, the bandwidth of USB-C to actually help out with that. Uh, the other thing it came with, it came with a little carry bag. I haven't even opened this one yet, but let's... Uh, Let's jump in and take a look. So, oh, that's a big carry bag. Why is it so big? <laughs> I don't know why this is such... Oh, okay. It looks like it's... I see what they've done here. So it's got... It's a, it's a carry bag like this. Maybe this is for putting headphones in as well. Because it's got a little sort of side pocket there. And then it's got another one for the webcam. Because the webcam itself is nowhere near big enough. But um, yeah, this is probably your travel bag that if you're carrying things around, you can take that with you. That's cool. And then I was perplexed by this. Um, so this extra piece of plastic came with it. Now I'm going to throw this out to the chat here. Anyone here live want to uh, uh, see if you're smarter than I am, which is very, very highly likely. Anyone want to tell me what you think this is and what this was that came with it? Because it took me far too long, maybe 30 minutes to work it out. Let's just take a close up look at it. It's this, it's a piece of plastic. Actually, that's a good way to test the uh, the quality of the, the lens up close because it's it's done a good job with the autofocus there. Look at that. You can hold something up close and it's autofocused in. It's got me nice and blurry. And then when we hold it up there, it does a good job of quickly autofocusing. But yeah, let me know what you think that one is. And uh, I'll see if, if others can guess a lot quicker than I could. Uh, I, I eventually had to look at the little, the little diagram here, which I'll show you in a moment to work out what it was. Now, the cable that this comes with is actually really good. It's like a really thick, strong, solid USB-C cable. So I like that. I like a quality cable. And if you're spending you know, upwards of $200 on a webcam, you want to have some quality gear. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see, what have we got? We've got some, uh, some ideas here, uh, Jade Star, is it a stand? Uh, Mark says, is it a stand adapter if it doesn't fit your monitor? Uh, Sion, I think it's a clip for your computer. Uh, Gary Hubs, flash mount eyepiece cover. Now that's, that's the ballpark. So this is a privacy screen. So... <laughs> This goes on top of the camera. Watch, we'll, we'll do it live. We'll uh, we'll place it on top of the camera. It's going to get a bit shaky here for a minute. So we place it on top of the camera, and it's got a little hinge. And look what happens. What we can do, we can say good night, everybody. I'll see you later. And now I'm hiding behind a screen of blackness until I flick up, and I can leave that on there. That's actually pretty cool. That I'm actually pretty impressed with because, look, I'm, I'm not going to wear my tinfoil hat and worry. Like, I don't think that the Russians or the Chinese are spying on me. But I do think that sometimes I accidentally, like, don't press the button to end a live stream. Or I want to make sure that I'm not accidentally hitting the go live button when I'm, uh, you know, in, in, in compromising positions. Uh, Mid-dress. You, know, you don't want, you, sorry, you don't need any of that mental image. Let's just say that this is a good thing because when I'm done with a stream, I can hit end broadcast now. I can say, good night, Australia and I can close off the world, and I can be confident that nothing is actually going to come back again. I'm not going to accidentally be putting my uh, my face out or any other part of me there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, as Nico says, it's a great idea. I have my computer in my bedroom. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that's cool. Um, yeah, is it stand or a camera cover? Yes, uh, part of the monitor stand. We've got a few more guesses coming in here a bit late, but yeah, it's a, it is cool. And uh, that's right. If I ever, if I ever need a quick nose pick, I can just say, uh, "Excuse me a moment, guys." That's a big one, and then come back, and you're none the wiser. It's very very cool. Um, Yes, and, and exactly, like things can happen like this. It is possible, it has happened before, where uh, people can have their computers compromised and people can actually see. Uh, 
this is why you don't answer unknown numbers and start talking to scammers. And definitely don't let anyone uh, don't let anyone log into your computer. If you, I know I'm talking to the wrong people here, but if you're talking to uh, your friends, your family, your relatives, do not ever let anyone that says that they're from Microsoft or anywhere else remote into your computer. No one from any company is legitimately ever going to ask to do that. For starters, they wouldn't want to spend the time trying to help you fix stuff. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, don't do it. Um, yeah, exactly. As Mark says, it's like closing the mic when you cough. So, yeah, here I was thinking they've put a weird bit of plastic in here and I don't really know why. And now it's possibly my favorite feature. The, the $3 piece of plastic that they've added to the top with the little hinge is possibly my favorite feature of this webcam. Just because, again, I'm not paranoid about this stuff, but I make mistakes. As you saw, if you watch the start of this stream... I make mistakes. I had the wrong audio set here in StreamYard and you heard the audio coming through the, the webcam instead of through my microphone. So uh, it can happen. But uh, yeah, I like that little privacy feature. Let's come back uh, and see if I've covered off on everything that I needed to hear. And once again, if you're here live and you've got questions or you want me to try something, then uh, do let me know. So we've shown you the new Logitech Brio. We've uh, let you know what's in the box and what you get with it. Uh, we've uh, let you know the features that it has that other webcams don't. So that field of view change, the 4K streaming, USB-C, the glass lens, which gives you this nice, highly defined picture. Uh, we've got to put it to the test here on the live stream and I think it's pretty good. I, I would give it a pass. I'd give it a pretty high grade. I mean, I I can't see what's streaming through, but from what I can see right here on StreamYard, it looks pretty good. Uh, and if we, in fact, let's flick back. If we just quickly, because you've been watching this for a while now, so let's just quickly flick back to the other camera. So we'll go to the C922. It'll pop up and it'll be like this first because again, we have to go back over to our software um, let's show you this on the screen. Back over to our software, select the C922, and then uh, we will come to video. And again, the first thing you touch, all you need to do is like turn it up and then turn it back down and it will re-engage. That helps you sync up your video and your audio as well as uh, get everything in order. So compared to this, you can see like the background of this now is very dark. So it's not defined. Now I kind of deliberately do this. I could of course turn my brightness up and give you more of the background like that, which is probably, this is more of the sort of style that we had before, but when I'm doing something and I want it to just be me in focus, then I turn the brightness down a little more and it goes to something like that. So I can choose to do that, but just for comparison, yeah, it, it's a similar sort of image, but the, the, the quality on the Brio is, is slightly better. Is it worlds ahead? Is this going to be for everybody? Heck no. I still highly recommend the C920 or the C922. They will get you a really good quality image, just like you're seeing right here again, especially if you add some lighting. And lighting doesn't have to be hard. What I'm using here are two soft boxes from AliExpress. They were like 30 bucks each. So about $60 all up, and I just stuck them in the corners of my room, put some globes in them, use the uh, the fancy Philips Hue system here just so that I can turn them off and on easily. But you can see the difference between having something like that and having something like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's different. So uh, we've got a question here. Test the frame rate. Just wave wave your hands, please. So yeah, if you want to just check, let's see if we can uh, can get the frame rate going on. We'll do some, some actual movement because I'm not moving a whole lot. This is the C922. We'll check the frame rate on that one. And then what I'll do, we'll switch back to the Brio and see if we get some smoother frame rate. Obviously, YouTube and StreamYard are in between here, so it's not going to be perfect, but we'll try the two. Let's come back over to the Brio and boom, we're back to the Brio. And again, we'll need to just go and tweak the camera settings of the Brio back over here. Make sure that's re-engaged. Seems to be. And uh, yeah, again, if we make it a little bit darker, we can make it more like what I was doing before with the other one. So uh, yeah, and uh, I know as, as Tom says, um, I almost like the old camera better. It's probably the settings. It'll take me a while to get this one with the right sort of settings, I think. I think I'll need to spend a little bit more time playing around, but let's just check the frame rate of the waving and the waving and see, this is the Brio, and see what that frame rate's like. Um, but yeah, I, I, I agree. When I first plugged it in, Tom, I went, uh, is this better? Do, is it just that I need to play around and get the get all the settings right? Probably. Um, 
but yeah, it, it's not better enough that if you were just doing casual streaming uh, that I would recommend updating to this. But if you're looking for something kind of next level that has those additional options and especially the things, if you're just joining us that we showed before with the camera options here of the field of view, being able to come in and then go right out to a 90 degree field of view, that's pretty handy. That's something that's pretty good to do. But yeah, I think I need to play around and work out because I need to decide, maybe even if I went the lower exposure on this one and then brought the brightness up a little, we might actually get a, an even better image now that I've got that one. So yeah, it's and, and again, I've, I need to play around with the, the contrast and sharpness too because it's definitely a softer image. So maybe I need to even up the sharpness a little bit more to give me a little bit uh, better image. Um, uh, Capsalam says, uh, yeah, I like the picture of the Brio. Yeah, that's probably a personal thing. And I think I'll be playing with both of them uh, a little bit more over the uh, over the coming weeks and months. So what I'm going to do now, just to finish off here so that you can take a bit of a closer look and I can show you this cable. I know, I get excited by weird things like the quality of cables, but they're cool. So uh, what we'll do is we'll switch back. So we're switching from the Brio back to the C922. Boom. And uh, we'll go again. I know it's, it's weird that every time you, you switch cameras, you do have to come back to the settings here. Otherwise, you lose sync and it doesn't give you exactly what you want. So we'll drop that brightness back a little bit to about there. That's about the spot I usually have. And yeah, I'm, I'm used to this look too, Tom. So uh, I think that uh, it's pretty good. Um, let's, uh, yeah, so let's unplug this now. Uh, grab, reach up and grab the Brio. There it is. That's what we've been looking at here today. I've already got my fingerprints on it, but thankfully not on the lens. <laughs> you can see there in the light. Uh, but here's why it's cool. So we have the, oh, you know why this is so big? This is so big to accommodate the USB cable because it's a really thick cable. I've only just thought of that. So here it is. This is what we were looking at before. We've got our little privacy screen there. So that's the Brio. And again, it's pretty hefty. So because it has that glass lens and it has this aluminium construction uh, it is a lot heavier so it, again it's the difference between using like the a Behringer interface and a Steinberg interface Behringer will still do the job but it's a bit light and plasticky this one solid built like a tank and uh, yeah has that glass lens so you I'll, I'll, you'll always need to have a, a microfiber cloth nearby to uh, give your lens a bit of care or a glasses repair no, what are they those little glasses wipes if you're there um, and then we have the little clip over the top and uh, that's the bit that goes on there. And that's what we were showing before that says good night and has that. So, uh, yeah. And even if, even if I do go back to using the C922, I'll probably just steal this and use this on there so that I can just at least have this. Because it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's about the same size. So this will probably work. I think I'll, maybe I'll just go into business just selling these little flips for, uh, for people that are scared that their privacy will be uh, interrupted. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's cool. I know a lot, laptops have had that sort of thing on webcams for a long time, but this one's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, USB-C port on the back, as you can see there. And uh, yeah, the, the actual stand. The other cool thing about this, I did bury the lead again. I haven't worked out how to actually detach it yet, but this is detachable. So this part will actually detach and come off. And then uh, that can screw onto a normal uh, mount. So a normal tripod mount which could be interesting because uh, as you'll see when I rock my table here, we get a little bit of movement from the monitor. Uh, if, if I could actually have this set up differently where it's, where it's on the floor on like a tripod mount and then it's over the top of my monitor, that may actually be a better approach. So we will uh, play around with that. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm torn on this one. I like it, uh, but it's going to take some getting used to. And uh, it, at the moment, it's almost like that. You know when... I don't know if you did this, but when you get a phone, like when I got the iPhone XS and I started shooting video at 60 frames a second, it looked weird. Like I thought it looked worse because I kind of liked the lower frame rate of my older phone's camera and eventually it kind of grew on me. So I don't know. I'm, it's going to take some testing. So over the weekend, we're going to do some shows with this and we're going to try it. It's going to be some trial and error going on here. And then, uh, yeah, you can let me know the verdict of whether we stick with the C922, whether we use the Brio, or you know what? You know what the good thing about this is? Combination of both. So not here in StreamYard, but if I'm doing OBS things, I can actually have two cameras. So there's nothing stopping me having the Brio over my shoulder 
just hover it. We could if I have a drone that I could just fly it, but over my shoulder so I can have that going that way and a face cam going this way or having this pointing at my iPad screen and my keyboard so that you can actually see things in higher quality and then have this hooked up to my laptop maybe over to the side and I could even have a, a second instance here in StreamYard. So there's a heap of options with this one, but I wanted to check it out because I'd heard good things and uh, yeah, pretty, pretty happy with it so far. Just need to get used to those settings. Uh, this cable, I know I keep talking about it. Here it is. So we've unplugged it. So you can see the thickness of this one. Like this is a quality lead and uh, I, I hate thin flimsy cables. So if you look at that one, that's chunky. That's your USB-A and your USB-C. Those ones are not going anywhere. You've got the nice collar on those, which means that they're not going to come apart. And uh, yeah, and again, I think that's why we, it came with the big case like this because it has a little Velcro thing on here. And I'm assuming if we wind this up, yeah, it... it it's it's quite a it's quite a hefty size, and you'll want this cable to go with you if you are using this on the go and you want a good quality. Yeah, there you go. That's what it was because look, that goes into there, <laughs> and you need that size just to carry your cable around. Uh, but it's nice that they give you all of that within the box, and this is what I looked at eventually. We'll just see if the nine twenty two is going to focus on that one. Not super well. Uh, this is what I looked at eventually to work out that I could detach it. And what this thing actually was. I'm like, why do you want to cover? Oh, that's why you might want to cover it. I see. Yeah, cool. So, verdict at this stage. Where am I? W would I recommend this? Well, it's too early. It's too early to actually say, yes, this is great. No, it's not. I think if you, were, if you had no webcam right now and you were getting started, still recommend the Logitech C920 or C922. It's a great value piece of kit. And as you can see, you can still get yourself a very, very solid image. If you want 4K, if you want to step it up to the next level, if you want to have that wider frame so that you can get more in your shot, if you're recording a band or you're recording yourself playing, that could be a reason why you'd want to go with something like the Logitech Brio to increase the quality of your images. Let's uh, let's uh, have a look at what a few folks have got to say here and any final comments. Um, so Jade says the C922 has a much more realistic natural look. I mean, yeah, and it may be the settings that I've gone with or it could be that whole weird like too high def thing. I know that sounds a bit weird, but uh, yeah. Exactly, Tom, I can have two camera angles now. Uh, can you adjust the ISOs on the application? So sort of, it's all encompassed in exposure. So you don't have separate uh, ISO balance uh, view. But if we come back over to here, we're on the 922. Uh, this is what you have. You've got your zoom. So your zoom, you can come in. It's just digital zoom and out. You've got your focus. So I can put it on to manual focus and I can focus like that. That's actually handy. Sometimes if I if I want to make sure I keep a static focus, I'll turn it on to manual focus so it doesn't do that wavering in and out thing. And then you've got your exposure. So there's just auto exposure or you can set your exposure there. And then under the video setting, uh, you've got your anti-flicker and you've got brightness, contrast, sharpness, white balance, and saturation. So you don't have a separate manual ISO setting on the, on the Logitech software, but it's all kind of encompassed within that exposure and it manages the ISO stuff for you. So... Uh, not not as flexible as it possibly could be, but it's probably enough for a webcam, I'd say. What's the price of these? So they currently retail for $199 in the US. Uh, let's come back over to here. Boop. So uh, $349, that's the Australian version. And I think I've actually closed down the US website. So yeah, $199 US, $349 Australian. I got mine for $319. Bargain. Uh, the problem is, like most things, they're kind of out of stock in a lot of places. So you may you may struggle to find one. Uh, Blue Sunset, uh, I thought this Brio had more image quality. The resolution is practically the same as C922 and only has a better color. Yeah, so again, I don't think the difference is is uh, astounding. And I don't know if this is going to be my go-to recommendation in the future. Uh, probably not. I'll probably stick with recommending the C922 because I don't think for most people you're going to get the benefit out of the additional features unless you need those. So uh, a good point. Um, cool. And uh, yeah, that's the other thing. The other reason that Pete got a new webcam to test out instead of buying a new camera 
is that uh, I plan to get an iPhone 12 at some stage and I'm considering the 12 Pro or the 12 Pro Max. The camera and the optics on those things is like next level. So instead of actually updating my camera, I have an old DSLR that I simply never use because this is good enough for, for the sort of things I do. Let me know if you think that's not the case. But I, I don't see the need to, to have like a big DSLR set up, especially at the moment. I use a combination of my iPhone XS and my Logitech C922. And I think that gives me decent video quality for the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, I think in the future, having an iPhone 12, that will probably become. And you know what? There's things that you can use to use your iPhone as a webcam which might be a good shootout for next time. Maybe we get the uh, the Brio and the 922 and then pit them against some iPhones and see what sort of video quality we get there. But anyway, I thought this was just something a, a bit fun, a bit different to take a bit of a look at to, uh, to be the guinea pig for you so that uh, you can actually see what these are like and see how they work in the wild in real life, not just the marketing speak and the pitch. I do, lo I do love Logitech, uh, and I'll, I'm, I'm not being paid to say that. They are not a sponsor of the channel, and they've never sent me anything. I pay full price for everything Logitech that I own, but I, I've just used them for a long time. And like Steinberg, who are also not a sponsor, they just have the best balance, the best quality gear for the best price. So you get the best bang for your buck, in my opinion. If you're interested, you can check out the links down in the description. But what I'll, uh, what I'll point you to at the end here before we finish up is that if you are in the market for gear for your studio, you can head on over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. That's this website here. This is my studio gear guide. And what you'll find is at the top here, this is my current setup. So everything that currently sits here in my studio that I'm using, my audio interfaces, my headphones, my guitar, my mics, my mixer, all the way down to... W for webcam, you can actually check out there. Those are affiliate links, meaning if you make a purchase, they'll break off a little chunk and send it your way. Uh, and uh, you can be like our friend Jalen here, who says that uh, using my mobile studio that just came in today, all thanks to you. Well, that is awesome. And uh, thank you very much. I'm very glad to hear because we need more people creating more music in the world. So uh, I do wish you all the best for that. That is going to do it for this one. Slightly embarrassing start there with the wrong audio and the wrong microphone, but that's how live goes. I will be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm doing a special live stream, which is going to be GarageBand Help Desk. So if you've got GarageBand questions, we're trying something a little bit different. I'm going to be answering some GarageBand questions here live and uh, giving a few hints and tips. We're going to set up the iPad. We're going to sit down here for at least an hour, have some fun, answer some questions, and hopefully uh, help folks out and get folks creating more music in GarageBand. Uh, do as Jade says here. There's all the details where you can check out my gear recommendations with my affiliate links there. And that means you'll get new gear and you'll be supporting the channel as well. Thanks everyone for being here. Please be kind to yourself. Don't go out and buy gear you don't need if you don't need it. <laughs> but do consider that. Uh, be kind to other people and keep on creating. So take care, folks. I'll see you soon.